Hello today guys, we are going to be doing a Bible study and it's going to be on moderation. Alright, moderation isn't really talked too much about in church. Not Bible studies, not anything really. We kind of, we kind of go around it a bit, um, but we don't really uh, like specifically say this is the moderation that the Bible talks about. <laughs> okay. So, I know this can be a touchy subject because the way we talk about it is basically using the word um, conviction, right? I have a conviction that I don't want to do that. And this, is, this, can, this concept can be found in the Bible with uh, the herbs and the meat. If your brother is weak and only wants to eat a certain thing, then with him that's what you eat. And you go away and you eat whatever you want later, okay? And this is for respect and peacefulness, okay? He, your brother who is only eating herbs, is doing that to honor God because he believes he's honoring God. So you coming in and being like, well, that's not right. You shouldn't do that, blah, 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 is actually, can actually cause him to sin because he's doing this out of honor and love to God. Okay, so that is an example of moderation. Hey, I'm not supposed to come into another Christian's life who's doing things that are clearly fine, right? He's not, he's not out here being like, I'm a Christian swinger for the glory of God. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> that is a clear line, right? Sex has a clear line. But when, when it comes to food, when it comes to clothes to a certain extent, because there's a clear line there as well, um, haircuts, language, things like this, we know that there is moderation okay we know that there are ways to do this that may look different in each place and that that is fine all right so one example or one the verse I typically use is this one it's Ecclesiastes 7 18 it's good let's see Pay attention to these instructions for anyone who fears God will avoid both extremes, right? And previously, previously he's talking about don't be so evil that people want to kill you, but don't be so happy-go-lucky and so, like, not even thinking about consequences and things like that, that you die because of your silliness, right? Be somewhere in between, <laughs> okay? Um, you can be, um, you can take things so far that you actually do harm to yourself and others, right? So one of the ways, uh, one thing that, one way that I think about this, right, is, for example, sex. You can take that too far one way, where you go the world's way, and you're doing it with whoever and whatever, or you're doing it even with somebody who you just have a relationship with at the time. You're not following the rule. But then you can go the other way, and be way too pious and godly about it. And the Catholics are a good example of this, where the priests are not allowed a wife. That's too far, right? You have to pull that back, pull it back, be this moderate person. Have a wife or don't. Sexuality belongs to marriage and not outside of it, right? <clears throat> So that is an example of the moderation that he's talking about. So another thing people often get sort of bent out of joint about is um, <clears throat> language. Language is so different everywhere. Um, and different words have different meaning depending on where you go. They also have different like... I guess meaning actually is fine. Curse words is one of the things that I'm thinking of the most because here in America, if you curse, it is generally seen as a lowbrow or negative thing. If you go to Europe, it's just sort of like you said hello. It has no none of that connotation to it, you see. So depending on where you are, your your language may change, right? I'm oh, sorry, well, let me adjust this. So <clears throat> that again is part of moderation that's in the Bible. Um, resting. I'm going to give a personal example. Right now, this uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome has got me in its clutches. <laughs> it is kicking me down left and right. 
so I'm taking a lot of time to rest. I'm doing, I'm not, you know, just sitting around. I'm, when, as soon as I have energy, I'm up and doing something, but I'm having to change a lot of things in my life, including food, like food. Um, I now take new medication. I now there's a lot of things that I have to change. And my church that I'm participating in right now is not harrowing me about not being there, about, you know, not doing X, Y, and Z. Um, they're just letting me rest. Now, could I take this rest too far? Yes, I could. I could even if I, I could say, well, because I have the energy, I'm not going to go to church. I'm going to do something else, right? That I've missed out on during the week. You know, that's not what your church time is for. You, you know, go to church. You know, I've gone to church even when I have almost no energy and they've seen me there too. Okay. Excuse me. But that level of allowance of moderation of, you know, not just jumping on somebody because they weren't there, but just being, you know, just letting somebody rest. Cause that's what I need <clears throat> very much right now. Um, <clears throat> You know, you'll hear from the pulpit all the time. If you're not here every time the church doors are open, well, there's something wrong with you. That's too far. Okay, guys, it's just too far. People have to go to work. People are ill. People are getting into new life things or whatever. Okay. Um, but that being said, we're not supposed to do what? Go the other way, which is don't show up at all or hardly at all. We are supposed to participate in the church, the body of Christ. We're supposed to be with our fellow believers, moving the gospel forward, right? And that is one of the things that when we talk about moderation, it's never really spoken about in, in that way. And, but one of the ways that the Bible talks about it is this way. Uh, Galatians 5.13 do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in love. Okay. It also says, uh, later on, uh, what is this to do? Where'd he go? I have another, I wrote a whole blog post about this. Okay. In first Corinthians nine, I believe starting in 19, I have become all things, to all people so that by all possible means, I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I might share in its blessings. Okay. When we use our moderation to, to, I, I don't really have a good way to say this or really an accurate way to say this, but when we use our moderation and kind of look like everybody else to a certain point, we need to be doing this with very severe purpose, I guess, with a purpose rather, right? You're not there to indulge yourself. You're not using your freedom to say, oh, well, I'm just going to go out here and have some fun. The point or purpose to doing something that looks maybe a little iffy <laughs> or maybe something that somebody else might look at that and go, are you sure you should be doing that? Is to share the gospel or is to be able to talk to the person that you're with about the gospel, right? It has point and purpose. It's not it's not just, I'm just out here having fun. God wants us to think about everything we're doing. Are we going too far or are we not going far enough, etc.? So that is what moderation looks like in the Bible. You have a lot of examples of this for you. So here's a, here's one that I don't really like to talk about because, um, God talks about divorce, right? He hates it is one of the few things that, you know, he specifically sets aside to say that he hates, right? However, he gives you at least two that I can think of right now, reasons that you can divorce. And that one of them is if you two are the unsaved, you, one person becomes saved and the other person doesn't, who is the other person doesn't want you around, you can divorce and go. Okay. The second is for adultery. So cheating. God, even then, God is like, okay, I, I won't be very extreme on it and say you can't at all. But for the sake of peace and the gospel, you know, you can, 
go ahead and do it in these two instances. And for the sake of the hardness of your heart. That's the other reason. Okay, so even God and something he hates has a has a type of moderation where he's not just slammed to the wall. That's what it is. Um, <clears throat> I can think of lots of different other ones. What do you guys think? Um, I'll be putting this in my blog. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Uh, that's where I'm kind of going to end it. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Remember to pray and read your Bible or really let God guide you on this idea of moderation. Because it can get slippery real fast if you're not careful and you don't do it with purpose. Okay, so I will see you in the next one. Bye.